Um, today I'm not going to be talking so much about Ebola virus, I'm going to talk about something I feel a whole lot more comfortable with, which is food and waterborne infections. And I'm really talking from the context of um, staying safe in the field, which as we know, everyone here has travelled, and most people who have travelled have probably become sick at some point from gastrointestinal illness. And I think that just highlights how difficult it is to actually prevent foodborne infections. Um, we probably need to be a bit more militant about it, <coughs> like that hand washing exercise we did earlier. Some of you may know this is um, Jenny Musto, who's uh, that's a picture of Jenny Musto, who worked at New South Wales Health, and um, she was investigating an outbreak of food poisoning from hawksbill turtles in, in the Northern Pacific. So today I'm going to talk a little bit about food and waterborne diseases and some of the common etiological causes in Africa. So if people are considering deploying to Africa, what you're, what you're likely to expect. And largely covering things that aren't really going to be covered by vaccines such as hepatitis A and typhoid. Um, and just some of their symptoms and, and, um, and what to expect. In terms of food safety, I'm just going to talk a little bit about choosing safer options. And I think it's extremely difficult when you are travelling to choose safer options. Um, most people really are um, compelled to eat sort of what's put before them, but um, sometimes it might be better to move to safe options. I'll talk a little bit about Ebola virus and food and, you know, and cover bushmeat. And then I'll talk a little bit about preventing waterborne infections. So just some definitions, when I'm talking about foodborne diseases, I'm really talking about um, illnesses that people acquire by ingestion of contaminated food. And the range of etiological causes is massive. It, there's over 200 different diseases caused by contaminated food. So everything from toxins and chemicals right through to parasites and bacteria and viruses. Today I'm largely talking about the main main game, which is bacteria, viruses, and parasites. Similarly with waterborne diseases, they're acquired from consumption of contaminated water. But it's also important to note that waterborne infection, what contaminated water can actually precipitate foodborne infections if uh, foods are washed in contaminated water. And travellers' diarrhoea is diarrhoea acquired while travelling. It's obvious. It's just a, a, a name that you'll hear people talk about travellers' diarrhoea and it's just a loose collective of different agents that people um, lump together. So in terms of food and waterborne diseases, if you're thinking about um, travelling, it often manifests as diarrhoea, but not always. But in the main, when travellers experience it, it is going to be largely diarrhea and vomiting. It is actually one of the most difficult issues to deal with for military deployments. It's the number one cause of infections when military are deployed. The rates are often worse early in the mission. They say in the first couple of days or weeks, um, people are more likely to actually become infected. And the longer you stay on a deployment, the more difficult it is to avoid high-risk exposures. And I think that's just something we have to, to live with. For military missions, they often consider antibiotic prophylaxis for short-term critical missions where you cannot get sick. And for something, if you are deploying for Ebola, you may want to consider that and get medical advice along with um, the, you know, vaccinations, appropriate vaccinations. The types of diseases you're likely to encounter when you travel depend on the destination you're going to clearly. Um, but the, the emphasis has to be on the individual prevention. When we're talking about food safety and, and water, water safety in Australia from a, a disease perspective, there's a big emphasis on, on regulation and protection from a corporate setting. But here we, we have to take responsibility for our own individual prevention. And, um, you know, obviously the Army taken seriously, this is a picture from the US um, Army and you can see one, one guy on top there saying, man, my stomach is, is, is wrecked. Where's the nearest toilet? And the other guy's going, gross, dude. You should have stuffed with the bread. Because he's been eating local food. So common foodborne symptoms. We, we're normally talking about nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, fever, myalgia, malaise, 
that's just the, the standard array of <coughs> diarrheal agents. Clearly, seek medical attention. It's mainly supportive treatment. No need for antibiotics in the main. But if you are in Africa, it may well be different because there's a high proportion of um, infections which are different etiological agents and they may be antibiotic resistant. But the other thing to remember is you might end up getting a differential diagnosis of Ebola and put in a, in a ward in the low risks area, which clearly isn't a good idea. So um, taking care with your food choices and your water is extremely important in these kind of situations. Here's a list of um, some of the recent, uh, some of the common diseases you, you, you might encounter in Africa. I don't know that it's too much detail there to take in quickly, and I've got a lot of these data from the GEMS um, multi-center study, which was conducted um, in several countries throughout the world, but two of which were in West Africa, and um, <coughs> the order of the first four there are probably the most prevalent in young children, and, and you would expect that they would be in adults as well. So Shigella, obviously, we, we do see Shigella in Australia, but it's generally um, species which are not as serious as you might encounter in Africa, so you'll get a more serious course of illness. Um, and <coughs> E. coli, we, in Africa we're talking more likely to get enterotoxigenic E. coli, rather than, you know, in Australia we're concerned about enterohemorrhagic E. coli. Um, norovirus, people might think it's not actually in a place like Africa, but it is. It's prevalent around the globe, and if you get norovirus, you're fine because it's over in two days, and it's only really vomiting and nausea mainly. But clearly, um, as you can see, a lot of these have um, consistent symptoms of um, diarrhea and vomiting. Um, with some of the, the protozoa like um, Entamoeba histolytica and Giardia, obviously the incubation period is fairly long as well, so hopefully someone would be almost finishing their deployment before they got those. I think it's fair to say that, you know, just because these are prevalent doesn't mean you're going to get infected with them. So just put that out there. There are other diseases, food and waterborne disease, you would need to be careful of, including brucellosis, which um, comes from raw milk and animal contact and causes relapsing fevers, sweats and muscle aches. <coughs> and also there's still quite a lot of um, Mycobacterium boba as a cause of um, TB from raw milk. So avoiding raw milk is obviously important. Cholera is endemic in West Africa, but I think the likelihood of travel is getting cholera is very slim because it's not that infectious, so I think it's certainly not a real concern. Um, I haven't mentioned hepatitis A here, but obviously that's a concern as well, but most people will be vaccinated before deployment. If you're thinking about swimming in fresh water, I would avoid it in um, West Africa because of schistosomiasis, which clearly is treatable and People become ill a long time after returning home, but it's still not pleasant. So, local foods are what the foods that are not supplied by the deploying agency, and they may increase the risk of illness if you're eating those routinely. Safety cannot be guaranteed, but in many instances, if you're travelling overseas, it may be a way of building trust and actually sharing food with people. However, I think, uh, and it's always been my advice to people going into outbreak settings, is never take any food or water from anyone, um, particularly doing contact tracing and all that kind of stuff. It's just not appropriate. Um, and I would say that's definitely the case in this instance. Not that it's a risk from an Ebola perspective, but just you wouldn't want to get sick from other pathogens either. In terms of safer food choices, the key adage I always think of is cook it, shell it, peel it or leave it. Um, you need to ensure that food is fully cooked and hot if it's meant to be that way. Um, ideally washed in clean water and um, fruit you can peel and they're pretty safe recommendations. And also refrigerated within one to two hours which may be difficult in many settings. Some examples include breads which have got very low water activity and rarely contaminated. Fully cooked vegetables, beans and rice kept and served hot. Um, boiled or well done meats eaten it within two hours um, and as I understand it, many of the um, deploying agencies will provide food and it's fairly bland and you just get used to that. Um, 
I've heard other people say you should tend towards a fruitarian diet and hard skin fruits and vegetables, which you can peel are obviously um, good choices. Foods to avoid, raw or uncooked meats, seafood, shellfish and eggs. Um, they're all guaranteed sources of salmonella and various other pathogens. <coughs> Salads, which can be really hard to avoid. Uncooked vegetables, unpasteurized fruit juices, and particularly unpasteurized milk products. Um, I think unpasteurized milk, we forget how good we've got it having pasteurised milk supplies. But if you're drinking unpasteurised milk or their product, um, it's definitely a high risk. In terms of pre pre preventing waterborne disease, just the key message is don't <coughs> use tap water. Um, and if you are in doubt, don't use it to wash food unless, um, unless it's been boiled. Don't brush your teeth, don't make or drink ice, don't drink in the shower. Um, and standard advice is to drink bottled water beverages and, and um, of course those that are factory sealed. Boiled beverages are generally safe such as hot tea and again as I mentioned before avoid swimming in fresh water from, from water washed and water contact diseases. If you need to disinfect water there's varying advice about what actually works for boiling water and you'll, you'll find some advice out there saying you need to boil it for 25 minutes well, that'll be for spore forming bacteria, but clearly they're not really going to be a problem from a waterborne disease perspective. For drinking, rolling boil for one minute should um, certainly kill the majority of bacteria and viruses. There are portable filters which people can, can buy and use, and they will have a disinfectant incorporated into the actual filter itself. Or the standard chlorine and iodine and um, sodium hypochlorite is standard using bleach and there's lots of instructions out there about how to appropriately, dis appropriately disinfect and you will find here we've got five the recipe for five percent and you just need to adjust it accordingly. Um, available in liquid and tablet forms but you need to limit the use of iodine treatment um, just uh, so that you don't overdose on iodine and obviously follow instructions there's lots of tablets and other forms of water disinfection around. Disinfection won't treat chemicals is another point if it's chemi chemically contaminated, it's not going to fix that. And it's also not going to um, deal with water which is really dirty, so that's something that filtration may be important as well. And again, as it was discussed this morning, with the, the actual disinfection, chlorine and iodine do need time to work with water as well, so you do need to allow it to stand for a sufficient contact time. So people might wonder whether Ebola is transmitted through food and water. Um, Ebola virus is not known to be transmitted by food or water. So uh, you know, it clearly can survive in the environment. We heard discussion about it lasting for seven days. Um, it's moderately thermolabile, so it will labile, so it will it's destroyed by heat. It can survive for survive for weeks in blood and contaminated environments and it has been isolated from survivor, saliva, as we've heard several times today. So I guess the key message is no sharing food with people. Um, and in Africa, it's, it's traditional to actually share from the same plate, so that's clearly not appropriate. But um, at this point, there's certainly no transmission documented from food or water. <coughs> the exception possibly is during handling bushmeat, during hunting, where people are actually going and hunting um, animals such as um, giant pouch rats, which are pretty big, that's a pretty big kebab there. <laughs> <laughs> we, you clearly, um, when, when you're out hunting and you, there's some bats there in the back corner, you, you know, if you've got animals scratching your body and blood everywhere, you've clearly got infection risks and um, that's a key concern in Africa. And, potentially sharing that and if it's undercooked there's always the possibility but I don't think the, the transmission of the bowl is quite worked out yet so but um, I'd avoid those rides, roadside stalls. In terms of personal hygiene obviously washing hands with soap and water in in this context we're not talking about the five moments of hand, hand hygiene but clearly that is a good principle before preparing food before eating after using the toilet after caring for someone who is ill, after contact with animals and children, uh, 
And one other thing I should say is do not prepare food for other people if you are ill. And use alcohol gel if there's no water and soap. And I've really benefited from those hand washing <laughs> And not touching my face. <laughs> so a few simple rules if you are deployed. Food served hot is almost always safe to eat. I'm not going to say it is always, but it's almost always. Foods cooked and left for any length of time may be unsafe. Dry foods such as breads are usually safe. Sealed beverages are safe, and carbonated beverages are acidic, so they've got a bit of an added protection. And <coughs> wash your hands. And um, I'm just going to leave you with a quote from Alan Young's book, Diarrhea is an Unfortunate Reality of Adventure Travellers. And travellers should expect to encounter the conditions. <laughs> so thanks. Thank